Uh, today's keynote speech is titled Nishida's Logic and Japanese Primatological Concept of Nature and Culture. Uh, as you may have already noticed on the homepage for the fifth IJP, the keynote speaker with this special lecture session is the world renowned primatological, primatologist, sorry, Dr. Yamagiwa Junichi, Professor Emeritus at Kyoto University. Let me briefly introduce Dr. Yamagiwa's more recent career. He served as the 26th president of Kyoto University from 2014 to 2020. He also acted as the 26th the president of the Japan Association of National Universities from 2017 to 2019. Dr. Yamagiwa was also the 29th President of the Science Council of Japan from 2017 to 2020. In other words, Dr. Yamagiwa has been unbelievably busy these past few years, at times uh, consecutively leading three of Japan's representative academic organizations. Incidentally, you may know of Dr. Yamagiwa already from this career as a primatologist, as an eminent uh, researcher of gorillas, and as an expert in human evolution. However, he has uh, apparently never given a lecture at the Conference of Japanese Philosophy. And so we wish to invite him to this conference so, so that he could present his research, which is based on the thought of the, the ecologist and anthropologist Imanishi Kinji, while also being influenced by Nishida philosophy. Dr. Yamagiwa actually closely studied under one of Imanishi Kinji's prize students at Kyoto University, making him effectively a so-called second generation uh, pupil. Uh, he also uh, promoted his, uh, I'm sorry, pupil, Imanishi uh, received a science PhD in the 1930s uh, for his theory of segregation, sumiwake. He also promoted his own theory on the study of nature, shizengaku, which we may rightly regard as a philosophical theory rather than a natural science one. During the 1930s, a Kyoto school was reaching the peak of its flourishing Flourishing, Imanishi was strongly influenced by Nishida philosophy. We can also see this influence of Nishida in the background of Dr. Yamagiwa's own thought. Dr. Yamagiwa is both a successor of Imanishi as well as an interpret of his writings. He has also deployed concepts such as living thing, species, and evolution in order to deliver his own readings on Nishida's works, such as logic and life. Uh, how can you engage, engage with the problem of symbiosis with the aid of Nishida philosophy? In considering this matter, we find that the dialogue with Dr. Yamagiwa is essential. Dr. Yamagiwa will now conduct the keynote speech under the title of Nishida's Logic and Japanese Primatological Concept of Nature and Culture. So please. Thanks for your kind introduction. Hello, everybody. I've studied on gorillas in Africa for more than 40 years as a primatologist. Primatology was originated as an animal sociology at Kyoto University in the middle of the 20th century. It was strongly influenced by Nishida's logic on the essence of life. Today, I would like to give an overview on the concept of Japanese primatology in relation to Nishida's logic and the future perspectives of our world after COVID-19. Why we should reconsider Nishida's logic now because I think modern philosophy is losing sight of its role. Since its beginning, philosophy has aimed to understand the structure of the world 
and discover the best possible way of life for humans. But now, it is becoming marginalized, having been overwhelmed recently by life science and now by informatics. Life sciences have shown that humans, like other life, are made with a genetic algorithm called DNA. Informatics suggests that this world, including humans, can be manipulated as a system of information. Both life science and informatics uh, are leading us to more convenient, more efficient, and more human-centric digital world. However, these trends are also causing global climate change and environmental destruction. So we are now facing the new era, so-called Anthropocene. Professor Augustin Belk, who won the International Cos Cosmos Prize in 2018, pointed out in his memorial lecture at the ceremony. The modern classical Western paradigm ontologically founded on dualism and logically on the law of excluded middle has entailed modernity and industrialization. It has come to a dead end, not only in biological terms, but also morally by decomposing the social link and I said aesthetically by wrecking havoc in the ran landscape. Instead of the Western paradigm, he appeals for methodology, a study of milieu. Methodology is different from ecology and it's based on the concepts of philosophers who considered on life and environments in the first half of 20th century such as Yakov von Yuxkyu, Watsuji Tetsuro, Nishida Kitaro, and Imanishi Kinji. They stated that the living things are not objective against the Western paradigm, but Berg said, reality, that of concrete milieu, is neither properly objective nor properly subjective, but trajective. I will go back to this argument later. Now, I would like to take up two concepts here, Nishida's logic and Imanishi's view of nature. Nishida's thought on science is the conviction that there is a higher order abstract reality creates science, creates technology, and reshapes this world through human rationality. The logic of Western subjectivation is that when one entity denies the other, a uniform environmental world created by technology and market is formed. The science attitude is produced by the subject observing and analyzing the object. There is a subject who is looking at the object which is separate from the subject. My understanding on Nishida's logic of place is as follows. Place is a field of nothing and place of awareness, such as that is to notice the hidden things. The Japanese term aida or ma in, in, in English between, I don't know. This means neither inside nor outside. Recognition of the environment from the side of living things is regarded as subject food. Time is something that is intuitively felt by the act of living. Modern science has viewed time geometrically, geometrically as simple space. He argued Logic and Life published in 1937 there is no method to confirm life or death outside this world. We are always inside this historical world, and life always acts in the historical world. The body is a thing, and 
simultaneously myself and my own environment. As an environment, the thing always comes into conflict with the self. He called this concept as environmentalization of the subject and subjectization of the environment. Imanishi, a famous alpinist, explorer, naturalist, ecologist, entomologist, anthropologist, and the founder of Japanese planetology, followed Nishida's logic of life and developed his own view of nature. He said, the structure of, as function, the structure as function of this world is originally differentiated and generated from one. Based on Nishida's praise, he emphasized field of living, that it's the environment which living things identify. Subjecthood or identity is the expression of living things. To live is to act and to make while being made. Natural science is focused only on inorganic environmental factors. Nature is an intermediate entity that overlaps both the unconscious and conscious worlds. There is something called a view of nature that cannot be divided into either of them. The concept of society and culture had been applied only to humans until Charles Darwin proposed the morphological and behavioral continuity between animals and humans from the evolutionary perspectives in the 19th century. Thomas Huxley, a British evolutionary biologist supporting Darwinian theory, stated in 1867, uh, 63, whatever part of the animal fabric might be selected for comparison, monkeys and the gorilla would differ more than the gorilla and the man. Darwin predicted in The Descent of Man that the fossils of our ancestor should be found in Africa because gorillas and chimpanzees are morphologically close to humans and they inhabit Africa. Since then, various trials have been made by natural scientists to identify the sociality in the animal world and to elucidate the common features of society and culture among animals. However, the majority of social scientists have regarded them as human-specific feature uh, based on language. Although some cultural anthropologists, such as Louis Morgan, have incorporated evolutionary theory into historical view of human societies, these trials led to discrimination of primitive societies from advanced ones and were criticized as promoting colonialism and racism. Consequently, the evolutionary theory was applied only to non-human animals, in the first half of 20th century, human science had clearly been separated from natural science until the Japanese primatology appeared. On the other hand, personal personification of animals developed in fantasy and movies in the 20th century. Mickey Mouse and King Kong were good examples, and people have gradually believed that animals have minds similar to humans. Natural scientists were prohibited to treat animals as having consciousness, while people regarded them as having personality like humans. Gorillas, the apes I have studied for more than 40 years in Africa, had been regarded as the most violent animals until recently. This is mostly due to the chest-beating display by their mature males, which was regarded as a prelude of their explosive attacks when gorillas were encountered with Western explorers in the 19th century. However, 
In the latter half of 20th century, pioneering fieldwork from mountain gorillas by George Scherer and Diane Fossey found it that chest beating has multiple meanings such as self-assertion, excitement, curiosity, prey invitation or courtship rather than threat. Gorillas are genetically close to humans, so misunderstandings of gorillas lead us to misunderstandings of our common ancestors. In the late 1940s, just after the Second World War, Imanishi and his students at Kyoto University started fieldworks in animal sociology to study Japanese macaques. Unlike most Western zoologists who strictly avoided anthropomorphism, they had identified each individual animal, then observed and named it. Imanishi thought this method to be essential for illustrating social interactions among individual animals. Itani Junichiro surveyed Japanese macaques with this method and described their social structure supported by linear dominance rank, leadership system, and kin relationship. Many Western zoologists now use this method to conduct fieldworks on non-human animals and to analyze their social interactions. And then they call it Japanese method. At Koshima Island in Miyazaki Prefecture in 1954, Japanese primatologists observed a four-year female macaque picked up a sandy potato, transported it to a water stream, and washed it with water before eating it. This macaque also invented another technique. She picked up wheat grains with sand scattered on the beach, transported them to seawater, and gathered and fed on the floated wheat grains. Japanese primatologists call the former technique the potato washing, and the latter the placer mining. They traced and analyzed the process of transmitting these newly acquired behaviors to other group members and found that they were transmitted within the same generation through prey mates, transmitted within kin groups, transmitted from young to old individuals, and some adult males did not acquire these behaviors. In contrast with human culture, which is usually transmitted from old to young individuals by social learning, Pre-cultural behavior of Japanese macaques is transmitted from young to old by individual learning, probably with emulation. This newly acquired behavior and its transmission process were not accepted as culture by the Western zoologists. But later, discovery on tool using behavior of chimpanzees confirmed the presence of cultural behavior in non-human primates. Imanishi used the term culture of non-human animals in much broader sense than culture defined in human-centered terminology. Social structure and behavior such as leadership system, paternal care, or flexibility in individual aggression, uh, aggregation, communication, and dominant subordinate relationships were regarded as culture. It was defined as non-hereditary acquired behavior that was acknowledged society, so acknowledged socially. They expected that non-human primates may transmit not only knowledge and technology and techniques for subsistence, but also means of group living. In Japanese primatology, it is essential to think about how cultural development and biological nature are inseparable. Western philosophers strictly distinguished human from animals by the presence of language. Animal behavior can be explained by the response to environmental stimuli. By contrast, humans have consciousness with language and create environments useful to them. However, recent studies on non-human animals reveal various niche construction, such as insects, birds, 
and mammals without language. Japanese primatologists try to find aida or ma in Chinese letter. That is transitional process between animal society and human society and uh, the absence of language, such as pre-cultural identification, social consciousness, division of labor, and multi-level social structure. I started my field survey on gorillas in 1978 to elucidate social and behavioral continuity between gorillas and human beings, first for nine months at Kavuji Biega National Park in Democratic Republic of, of Congo. Second, at Vol Volcan National Park in Rwanda, under the supervision of the late Diane Fossey, I spent all my daytime with gorillas and observed their social interactions closely. Then I found peering behavior among them. Gorillas stared at each other very closely in various social contexts, such as greeting, prey invitation, courtship, reconciliation, and consolation after conflicts. Peering is rarely observed among Japanese macaques and other Cercoptex monkeys. Staring means a threat in these monkeys. Subordinate individuals avoid gaze of dominant individuals closely or show gr grimace, an expression of fear and subordination. Chimpanzees and orangutans also show face-to-face -face communication as well as gorillas. As you expected humans, the members of hominidae, like gorillas and chimpanzees, also show face-to-face -face communication most frequently. However, we usually keep longer distance. Why? I think many of you believe that we do for conversation. But if talk means the exchange of vocalization with each other, we do not need facing each other. The real reason is that we lead others feeding by the movement of eyes. This figure shows eyes of monkeys on the left side and eyes of apes on the right side. You can see the distinct difference of ours from both monkey and apes. That is the presence of white part in the human eyes. Thanks to this, we can read the feelings of the other person from the minute movements of the eyes. Because all apes do not have the white part, only humans have evolved this feature probably far before the emergence of language. Face-to-face -face interactions with reading eyes, eye movements may have increased our abilities of empathy and sympathy. We humans have a brain three times larger than a gorilla. Why did human brain size increase? I think many of you believe that language is the main cause of increasing brain size due to expansion of memory, but we doubt such process. The human brain began to grow two million years ago and reached the size of the modern human brain 400,000 years ago. In contrast, language first appeared only 70,000 years ago. Robin Dunbar, a British anthropologist, found a positive correlation in non-human primates between the neocortex ratio and average group size. It means that their brains grew as the number of peers increased, that is, in response to increasing social complexity. The human brain may have followed this trend. Based on this hypothesis, the average group size of fossil humans is 30 at the beginning of enlargement in brain size and grew up to 150 according to the present brain size. Interestingly, 
The average community size of the present hunter-gatherers is 150. We can estimate that even after the emergence of language, the modern human lived as a group of 150 people until the beginning of agriculture 12,000 years ago. The great apes never left the tropical rainforest, where they got plenty of food and security. When the early hominids left the forest and started to live in the savanna, they faced lack of food and high predation pressure. Bipedalism probably developed as an efficient walking style with free hands to collect and carry foods. Early weaning was an adaptation to high predation by increasing fe fecundity. It stopped suckling to resume ovulation of mothers and to reduce intervals interval. If modern human weaning coincided with the, the eruption of the first molar as non-human primates, it should have occurred in the age of five to seven years. In fact, this assumption is far older than the actual weaning age. As a result of the, of the early weaning, human child period for when soft food should be provided by the elder people emerged in human evolutionary history. Then about two million years ago, when brain size started to increase, somatic growth speeded down to provide much energy to brain growth. Human babies are born with large body fat deposit as insurance for the development, developing brain. High fecundity and delayed somatic growth made it difficult for mothers to raise children and required alloparental care, caretaking by non-parent individuals and cooperation within and between human groups, resulting in a new organization of human society. Furthermore, as bipedal work brought difficult labor for females, humans acquired menopause and ended extended the life after menopause to assist the production of the young generation. Such changes in these features led human ancestors to form families and communities for communal breeding and resulted in enhanced empathy and sympathy among adults. We now rely too much on language. However, the emergence of language was relatively recently, and our main social features were constructed long before without language. Now I think it necessary to listen to what Nishida said and Japanese view of nature. Nishida said in 1927, see the shape of the shapeless thing and hear the voice of the voiceless thing. Primordial motion is originally hidden from seeing and hearing and is temporarily caught by our eyes and ears as visible forms. Japanese culture is emotional and dynamic, taking the basis of reality from a dynamic image, it is assumed that form and color are in the midst of a transitional movement that arises and departs from a place without shape or voice. The place in which things exist is the background. In my understanding, Nishida's world, integrating them into Imanishi's view of nature and methodology of Berk. The world is a system of organic and inorganic matters made up of invisible networks of relationships. Relationships precede individual and species because the structure as function of this world are originally differentiated and generated from one. That is Imanishi's view. That is Nishida's logical place 
and Imanishi's view of life. When living things act to live, the relationship as background becomes visible. That is trajective by Belk's definition. The knot of the relationship is formed, and the relationship changes little by little according to the actions. The accumulation of these, these changes results in a phenomenon of evolution. Japanese emotional features are expressed in Japanese paintings. Seshu and Uemura Shouen are famous as painters using yohaku margins, in which shapeless things and voiceless things are hidden. The Japanese view of nature is based on animism, which is to consider that humans and nature can interact on an equal footing. Gods dwell all around, taking many forms. The gods are guided by animals. Animals and humans can be transformed to each other, and they can even marry and breed to have children. The concept of ke and hare K means everyday life, while Hale means extraordinary, such as rituals, festivals, and traditional events, when people see and listen to spirits and ancestors. Conversation with nature, called kikinashi, a kind of onomatope. Animals have societies and cultures of their own, which Japanese primatologists proved scientifically. Living things are reincarnated many times and reborn as living things, including animals as well as humans. Japanese view of the world has always a space between hare and ke called aida or ma. I will show you some examples. The Japanese antipirago is a long island from north to south with a backbone mountain range running in the center and surrounded by the sea. From a spatial point of view, there are mountains and the sea of Hare across the village of Ke. And between Hare and Ke, there are Satoyama and coast. The world of mountains and oceans is the habitat of gods and wild animals. Satoyama and coast are the places where the messengers take gods, and Sato is the habitat of humans and domestic animals. In Satoyama and Kos, there is a tori, a kind of gate, which means the border between Hare and Ke. And this border, people take a bath base and cleans their body to meet gods. Tori looks like ark, but it is not gate. It provides us the space of Aida or Ma between Hare and Ke. The messengers of gods are Japanese macaques at Satoyama. In the spring, macaques lead gods from the mountains to the field of agric agriculture and return them to the mountains in the autumn. Turtles are also the messengers of, at coast. They lead gods from ocean to lands and sometimes lead people to the world of gods. This Japanese view of the world is based, is based on the Eastern thought. Tetra lemmas, originally from India, can be divided into the Western law of excluded middle and the Eastern law of included middle. The Japanese concept of Aida is an example of the latter. To overcome dualism and the law of excluded middle, by assertion is important and Nishida's logic well reflected. By assertion is expressed in Japanese culture. The concept of Aida is a good example. Satoyama is belonging to both mountains and Sato, farmlands. Coast is belonging to both ocean and Sato. A bridge is also the place of Aida on a river, which is belonging to both shores, banks, River itself is also Aida, which is belonging to both life and death. When people die, 
they cross the river and reach the other bank of this world. Veranda calls Engawa in Japanese is also beginning to inside and outside of house. Visitors in general sit on veranda and enjoy talking and sometimes playing shogi, Japanese chess, with hosts. The word mitate is to regard what we see as something else. Mitate can translate it as is in English. It is predictive field like Nishida's place, indicated by Belk, and not a logical subsistence. Choju Giga, animal caricatures, the oldest manga in Japan in 12th century to 13th century, is a good example. Frogs and rabbits behave just like humans, and we can realize that they are both animals and humans. Bonsai is a miniature of natural trees with artificial modification, and kokeshi represents human beings with soul. Bunraku is a traditional Japanese puppet show originated in the Edo period and we are still impressed by thinking of these puppets as human beings. These traditional view of the world and life still exist in Japanese mind. Animation and robots and costume play. Japanese perspective on life is to respect form. As people grow, they move into new stages. At each stage, they usually change their clothing and hairstyle. Ancestors and gods descend on the real world during every season. Ceremonies are held to welcome them. The culture and ceremonies of all religions are accepted. By assertion enables us to accept multiple religions. In the tea ceremony, to learn every act of a form is to learn mental attitude in the traditional ways. In the traditional sports of Japan, form is more important than the actual fight. Zazen emphasizes the special form to bring mindfulness meditation. Now we must go back to the problems we are facing. Since the emergence of language, we have lived in fictions constructed by words, but we could understand the real world in which we are living simultaneously. Agricultural and industrial revolutions have increased human productivity and led to rapid population growth. Nowadays, the rapid development of information and communication technologies encloses us in fictions. Not only human population, but also the number of domestic animals has rapidly increased. You can compare with uh, wild animals. Now both populations exceed 90% of all mammal biomass on the planet. More than 40% of land is now occupied by upland fields pastures and cities, and forest area, which high biodiversity are rapidly declining. Three out of nine indicators have exceeded the limit value of planetary boundaries. These tra tra tragedies are the result of repeated deprivation of nature as an object that humans can control. Now, digital technologies change human emotional features to cause more negative effects on the harmonious relationships on the planet. Human brains include emotion and intelligence connecting each other and have supported the concept of humanity. However, it should be noted that only the part of informatized intelligence can be taken out of the brain to elaborate it artificially. 
data science leaves emotion behind because it cannot be turned into information and analyzed. We tend to leave the mechanized and data-oriented society without empathy and sympathy. It is the critical period for us humans and the Earth. If we continue to rely largely on ICT, information and communication technologies, and AI, artificial intelligence, we will live in the virtual world rather than the reality. We must reconsider connection between lives and new normal of human life under and after COVID-19. Today is an era of anxiety. Safe environments do not fully provide us peace of mind. Individuals are separated from the community. Everyone is requested self-actualization and self-responsibility. The world is global but has no center, becoming flat and homogeneous. People spend time not on physical connections, but on brain connections through SNS, social network service. We are facing the crisis caused by the digital world. It is informatization and homogenization of objects and people. Ultra smart industry and environments, evaluation and selection of individuals by artificial intelligence, gene editing and biotechnology, these technologies lead to widening the economic, social and biological gaps between individuals. Widened disparity will increase conflicts among people and groups and will re lead to destruction which exceeds the limits of planet's cap capacity. Now is the time for us to reconstruct the worldview that emphasizes the flow of life and the stability of the ecosystem with reference to Nishida's logic. The concept of ecosystem is not based on reductionism, but on holistic approach to nature and the planet. The problem with modern science is that it attempts to cut out the fluid relationships of life as stationary and artificially recreate them as manipulated. It must be remembered that energy and things circulate and maintain their stability in the system of the Earth through related networks. Before looking at things objectively, we must stay in the middle of the relationship and have the perspective of judging the fate of things from both sides. At that time, it is important to think either ma or mitate in the way of biosession. That's it. Thanks for your listening and cooperation. Thank you very much. Um, I suppose you have many questions, so please raise your hand. At first, on site, Audience, please. It will, we have a mic, just a moment, please. Okay. Um, yes, thank you very much. That was really fascinating. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I just have one, one problem, <laughs> a small problem. It's just the way you, you're using this concept of. Japan, okay? First of all, you say Japan has this tradition, but you're, you're in a way denying that other, other societies, including European societies, would have had extremely similar traditions, okay? The closeness to nature, animals, mm. coming and going, the vision between ordinary life and going, going wild and festivals and communing with mm. the spirits. I, I think, you know, a European society traditionally would have had that. And also, the way you're able to use Japan is because you're using a modern idea of Japan. So you're, um, in a way, you're, you're promoting a traditional view by appropriating a modern concept of Japan as an extremely unified, zen-type, key-type, organic, totalized 
concept of Japan. So I, I think you're, you're, at one hand, you're denying traditional societies and other societies. On the other hand, you're creating a traditional society which is actually using a modern idea of Japan. So it, it's, it's just that, you know, there's this, this Nihonji long tradition that, you know, I, I wonder should we move a bit on for this sometimes. Okay, sorry, that, that's my question. Yeah, thank you very much um, for your suggestion. Um, I would like to try to harmonize Western modern science, such as the term of ecosystem. Ecosyst the, the concept of ecosystem coming from Western paradigm. But it's holistic, not detectionism. And for example, Nishida's words, place, or place of nothing. Before dividing everything, we must think such as, you know, nothing and everything. And then we can put together the concept of ecosystem. It is only the relationships. Um, among all the things and living things. It is, uh, you know, uh, um, essential matter, essential concept. And then we must think about which is which. We are living in the real world. We can see, we can hear everything that if we um, um, are conscious. But before, we recognize everything that is one form um, without dividing. So that is the you know, um, um, essential condition um, for thinking the world. So I, I would like to this, you know, um, harmonize these two concepts um, from Western culture and Eastern culture, especially from Japan. Yeah. Thank you very much for you. Um, I have uh, ha uh, received already, already some comments. And uh, first, I'd like to uh, Professor Cromwell's uh, talk and ask question. So please speak. Uh, hello. Um, so I, I have uh, Two questions. Uh, my first question is um, uh, close to the the previous question. Um, since you you studied uh, gorillas in uh, Africa, I was wondering if maybe um, uh, animistic societies, you know, might have um, uh, also might have something to contribute culturally. Um, since you were talking about the distinction between uh, uh, Japanese cultural uh, practices and phenomena from uh, modern Western culture. So that made me think about, you know, perhaps uh, the, uh, these other cultures that are non-Western, if they might have something to contribute. And then uh, my second question uh, relates to what you were saying at the very end, because you were talking about the flow of life and, and energy, um, the flow of energy through uh, networks. And then uh, that made me think of uh, uh, post-Newtonian uh, physical science, um, science, uh, you know, uh, 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 the uh, physics, um, like Einsteinian science. I, you know, I, I know, I, I know there's a, a, a strict distinction between biology and, and physics, but, but I was wondering if um, you had any thoughts about the possible um, connections between uh, the more, you know, uh, Einsteinian physics, if, if, that, if that might be able to contribute in some way to uh, 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 this, um, what you were trying to um, develop with your um, biological study. So two, two mm. questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to respond to your second question, because um, I think we are now facing three different phases of 
you know, um, thinking. Um, Einstein's world is, um, well, we can realize by mathematics, not real world, because it is not visible. And also, biological world and micro level, and, you know, inside cell, for example, you, we can't see. Um, you know, if um, we can stop the movement of um, each part of cell, we can see it is visible. But actually, we can't see the movement of these parts. So um, in the real world, we can't understand function or structure. Yes, we can realize structure, but without seeing their movement, we can't realize their function. But, you know, so three different rebel, it is not, um, you know, uh, integrated and one into one theory. It is difficult integrated three different kind of rebels into one theory, um, even now. So, and we can realize um, individual rebel, insects, even um, well, uh, microbiome and virus, you can see um, by your eyes. So then their movement, we can realize and relationships. But in Einstein world and microbiological world, even now we can't understand by our sense. So then we, only we can imagine the relationships. Mm. But it exists reality, yeah. In space rebel, in the planet rebel, and biological rebel. Even now, you know, we can't create um, life by our materials. Mm, yes. So that's our, our grand question. Why mm. this, you know, um, space rebel, planet rebel, and um, life rebel, how they match um, into one movement? For example, um, the second theory of physics um, we can't apply it in um, microbiome, inside, inside cell, um, how they maintain the system. We can't analyze it using um, second theory of physics. Entropy is every, every time widening and you know, um, going to chaos. But cell itself, it's um, maintain the system. But how it's maintained system, even now we can't understand. That's our grand question. And it's, you know, <laughs> difficult to understand. Mm. Okay, thank you. And the next, uh, Professor Yusa Michiko, please. あの、ありがとうございました。ゆさと申しますが、あの、アメリカでも夜12時、11時半過ぎてるので、ちょっとこう寝そべりながら聞いてたんですけれども、あの、2つほど、あの、感想というか、それとちょっと疑問というか、あ
I will see if he has any white parts. <laughs> <In his eyes. laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job. あるいは面積でね、ディペンドの幅が white. And I, so that is something new to me, and I don't know why it became that way, but it's a very fascinating point. Mm, mm, mm. And the second point was you mentioned that、uh, I think the number of animals have increased.、Mm. With,、uh, is that correct? Number of that, animals?、Oh, Number of... You showed us、uh, one of the slides and said the, like, the proportion of forest and cities and、uh, oh. desert. And on the other side, you mentioned the number of uh, mm, like, mm.、Uh, cows and.、Uh, mm, mm, mm. And I didn't quite understand it because my. Feeling is that animals are dying, like,、uh, you know, snow, whatever, or tigers or elephants. All these important animals are dying away.、Um, that figure shows that, you know,、um, number of domestic animals and human beings are increasing, is increasing. But number of wild animals and the kinds of wild animals declining. I see. That's、yeah. something I wasn't very clear. So I、mm. wanted to make sure because I think there is a population control issue、mm. if the Earth is going to be sustaining、mm. all the lives. And、mm. second thing is that human beings are still responsible for preserving and conserving. And helping other animals to survive. So I wasn't, I was wondering if it's a good idea that we increase <laughs> domestic <laughs> mm, animals mm. and domestic people increase. you know.、Yeah. So, what is your uh, uh, view on this one? What I would like to say、um, by these figures, you know,、um, we increase、um, number of ourselves and domestic animals. That results in destructing tropical rainforest and natural forest where wild animals are living. So, that's co- consequences to decrease the number of wild animals and、uh, um, the place where they live. And again, that consequences lead us to face.、Um, Unknown viruses and unknown microbiomes.、Uh, okay, I understand now. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. Any other questions、uh, among, from、uh, yeah, first、uh, Professor Sato and the next? Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. My name is Sato. I'm from Tokyo University. Oh, I have to stop. So,、um, I, I was really、um, fascinated with the talk,、uh, but、um, you mentioned about the relationship and、uh, the importance of relationship.、Mm? I'm talking about、um, relationships. Relationships. Yes, yes.、Uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned about the relationship. <laughs>、um, okay. Yes. Uh, the, so, I was wondering so, there should be like a、um, kind of structure、mm. in the relationship as well. You、mm. mentioned that we have to look into the function,、mm. but then I thought that、um, there also is a, a structure between Aidagara, the betweenness. So, there's like a, in, in the animal world, there's like a predator prey relationship,、mm. so, and there's also like a hierarchical relationship of jakuniku kyoshaku, which is mean, you know,、mm. like basically prey and predator. And、um, relating to that, I was also wondering of the, I mean, you mentioned about the second law of thermodynamics on、um, the increase of、um, entropy,、mm. right? And then,、uh, I, I, I mean, I'm a little bit confused right now, but I was always thinking about this informi- informative or too much information decline society that we're facing now,、mm. with lots of people talking about themselves on SNS. And I was wondering is this 
correlates with this, you know, second law of energy because I was in um, working in energy as well. So I was wondering if, if if the second law of energy, the second law of thermodynamics, is the true things, true law that mm. is embedded in the natural law. Then, I mean, the decimalization of you know information is making our relationship, the individual relationship, very not difficult, shallow mm. in a way. And I thought that maybe that is correlating with the Newtonian, mm. the, second, the, the second law of thermodynamics, which is the entropy of all that. Mm. So do you think that there is a correlation that with the increase of information no yaritori, there's, there's <laughs> also like adaptation of um, second law of thermodynamics that you know, our um, individual relationship is like dispersed mm -hmm. and it's like, it's, it's the same kind of thing that's happening in the energy of Dani Hosaku to the same thing that's happening in the energy of Dani Hosaku to the same thing that's happening in the energy of Dani Hosaku to the same thing that's happening in the That's right. Um, I think if um, everything is informatized, then it must follow the law of um, the second uh, physics law. But in biological sense, um, it is opposite, opposite things occur, occurred. For example, DNA. For um, in, uh, for science, eh? and you you say that function and structure. Mm. If um, uh, deoxyribo uh, and the kaksan, what did you say? Asset. Yeah. Its arrangement can change, and you know the result changes. So. Um, Physics can't estimate that, that kind of law. Physics always, you know, um, relationships and the distance. But in biological sense, the word four worlds, and region, shitoshin, four worlds, if the arrangement is changed, then function changed. So that can be estimated by physical law. So that is a biological um, you know, world. So that, is, that can be followed. That can follow the physical law, entropy, enlargement law. So this is, this is um, gene digital world. And also, these days, epigenetics means not only the arrangement of genes, but also the structure can make changes after birth. Environmental conditions can affect on the structure of the genes. So it decided on or off of the functional gene. So that is epigenetics. That also can't follow the physical law. So that is, you know, still unknown matter in biological world. So if we monopolize everything as mechanized information, then those things follow physical law. But before dividing or recognizing things as information, if it is life, it can't follow physical law. But um, Professor, um, the four assets that you mentioned, I mean the DNA, I mean, it's, it's just like the changing of orders, right? Because we can actually, you know, manipulate DNA as 
right now. Yes, that's right. The, 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 the vaccination that we're going to have is based on the RNA acid, right? So, and people now are facing this the mutation of COVID-19 viruses. So, um, that is also, I mean, um, this is not really the relationship that is going on, but it's more like a high, uh, not discussed, changing orders, I should say. Yes, that's order, not power. You know, <laughs> physics is the, um, you know, uh, phenomenon of power. So DNA arrangement, order, is not power. So different law. From you mentioning about the good thing, say, is continuous? Mm, continuous, yes, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. And the uh, professor, Jen, maybe you, could you, could you come, come here? Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, President Yamandia, my name is Jeremy, and I'm actually in a uh, graduate school of education uh, for about uh, seven or eight years. At um, Kyoto University. At uh, Kyoto University. Right. So, uh, so I know um, the Imanishi story very well. And my question to you today is, um, you're a Rike scholar, you're a science scholar, but you've had this experience as president of Kyoto University mm. and worked across disciplines. So I wonder if you can tell us your view of Bunke. Hmm? Your view of Bunke, of social science and humanities ah, Bunke, scholars. Jim uh, Bunke. Yeah, from the perspective of Rike. And the reason I have this question is because um, I feel, having been at Kyoto University, that you can move the Nishida worldview hmm. through Rike, through hmm. science. Because you have field work, because you have falsifiability. Mm, mm. But in Bunke, although we have this massively rich tradition at Kyoto University, mm -hmm. we have a hard time to move it out. Mm. And I don't think that's the fault of Japanese scholars. Mm. I think there's plenty of Japanese scholars who have tried to move it. Mm. But we get the reactions, um, for example, the first question, that this is a, this is a kind of creation of division, mm. uh, a skepticism. Mm. There's all kinds of inbuilt kind of uh, framework for academic discourse that we, we as non-Japanese would rather deconstruct the Japanese view of modernity mm, 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 mm. than deconstruct ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So in a sense, we function Bunke as a kind of religion still, even though we <laughs> consider ourselves mm, mm. secular. I mean, do you see it that way? Like, how can we explain the difference between Imanishi or Bunka Shinigaku, Kitayama Sensei, they have changed their disciplines worldwide. Mm, mm. But yet, we have all this richness, but we can't change it. And I, I think the problem lies outside. Mm. What do you think of Bunke as a, as a Rike scholar? Um, Bunke, Rike, it's two cultures, I guess. And uh, um, division of two cultures are very clear in the Western world. But in Japanese tradition, it is not very clear, um, traditionally. But now, every university has accepted Western method to study. So we are now adapting to Western culture to divide everything and to, to think um, function or relationship between um, things we have already divided. So that is a way of um, analyze from Western world. So we are now adapting this kind of methodology, okay. even in uh, Bunke. Okay. But um, Imanishi, um, my supervisor, um, thought, okay, in natural world, it is not clearly divided. Um, if we see uh, things, and we pick up things from the background. And it is human intellectual um, ability by words, by language. And I wonder that art, for example, paintings, appeared just about uh, 40,000 years ago, just 
it occurred after the emergence of language. So human um, developed the ability to paint um, object on the well, wall in the, you know, everywhere. They could think by language. But before that, they couldn't about that. They couldn't divide anything. They can feel, yes. So that things I have learned from gorillas. Gorillas have no language, but they can discriminate anything. But it is not clear border. Um, fruits, branch, and the trunk of trees, and uh, on the ground, nests, things. But, you know, they, if they are conscious to divide, they can divide. But before that, you know, there's no division in, in their world. So now, we, so I, as I said, we rely so much on language, thinking by language, to see by language, and to keep our memories by language. But if we go back to our five senses, for example, taste, or, you know, we can't express by language very well. We can't. But we can feel that. And, but it's very difficult to share with our friends such taste. We, 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 we have some words to express these kind of tastes, but it is not real sense. So that's ambiguity we still living. So, but in a real life, we share such information by language, but we um, leave many things out of language. But in the field, if we, you try to um, talk with birds, you must look at their movement and you must listen um, to their vocalization and you can estimate how they can interact with each other, with plants, with flowers, with fruits, and with their creeks not by language, but also you can, you know, feel something in, inside the world. So that sense we need to expand these days so that, you know, we can um, use our sympathy and empathy to non-human world, even um, inorganic world. Yeah, I, such a... Such things, I, I guess. So. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. And any other questions? Okay. If I may. Yes. Sorry. Second question. But so uh, you mentioned that the importance of emotion. Mm. And um, sympathization or sympathy is, is going to be important. Mm. But what we are facing now within the human beings, the human society, is the... Um, you also mentioned about anxiety, but it's, it's more like... Um, sympathizing um, fatigue. Like, you know, um, we have been facing this COVID-19 since last year. And we have been sympathizing with the, um, the essential workers, but at the same time, there's like also a, um, discrimination against them. But then we kind of are overwhelmed by too much sympathization. And then we're, some people feel that they are a little bit tired of <laughs> sympathizing. Mm. So I'm wondering um, how could we I mean, in your in your idea, how could that can be balanced between this you know, the normal condition, sympathize or emotional condition that you have mentioned? Um, the thing I'm asking is because we are now trying to head into um, 
uh, economy that is based on um, uh, like that's tansoka, which is like um, um, car decarbonization mm. of um, um, uh, society. And I think um, while um, Japan doesn't really have natural resources and we banned um, uh, nuclear, but then um, there's also an anti-carbon uh, <laughs> usage as well. Like, um, like the um, core or fuel plants. So um, I'm wondering, how could we balance that kind of things? And I'm thinking that 21st century is going to be the century that we have to really think about balancing many things. So one of the things is the balance between the em too much emotion and just sure, ignorance. Uh, the bit, the I think um, the, the my idea is to reconsider culture in this global world. And COVID-19 forced us to uh, stay home mm. within a small community. And uh, within the community, um, we could um, spend our sympathetic world, but outside of community, that's a very, you know, violent, and uh, well, we exchange hate speech by SNS, and we cross the border. That's, um, you know, uh, like United States, like uh, President Trump, and um, you know, uh, America is number one, mm -hmm. Japan is number one, China is number one, so. That is, you know, separate nation to nation. So we must reconsider culture to survive in this era, and then to connect between culture to consider global ethic, global ethic. So that two kinds of reconsideration should be made in the future. Because um, these days, until the appearance of COVID-19, we followed only the global ethics. And uh, you know, even Japanese government forget to you know, uh, support um, regional matter. We must reconsider, reconsider not only culture, but also ecosystem in the region. About uh, 50 years ago, Gary Snyder, um, you know, uh, philosopher and poet, he created the concept of bioregionalism. Bioregionalism. It is the answer in this world, I think. Bioregionalism means it's include. Um, not only human beings, but also all the living things in the region must expect, must respect the living things together in the region, not whole planet. First, we must, you know, respect such things and then reorganize the culture with nature. And then we must connect with culture and culture to construct global ethics again. That is very necessary. SDGs, it's global matter. So every government must follow and they are doing um, to reach the um, you know, key point indicator um, to lead us to 17 goals of SDGs. But it's not enough. And such you know, uh, goals are different region to region. So we must reconsider first bioregionalism, biological um, system in the region. It is very different, especially in Japan, from north to south and the uh, ocean in the mountain. There's a, variety of um, fields and uh,
people live differently. Differently in the um, natural conditions and cultures. We must reconsider about that, how we can live with peace. And then, you know, international ethics, global ethics must incorporate it into our way of living. Yeah, I guess. Thank you very much. I agree with you. Yes, we have to Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you are tired of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, uh, so the last question, please, Professor Lox. Uh, thank you for what well, was a fascinating, uh, fascinating and interesting talk. Um, I've had a ongoing co uh, dialogue with a colleague who's interested in the same area, trying to parse out where the human ends, where the animal ends, etc. You brought up a question, the importance of culture, and in terms of developing our ethical actions. Mm. Um, and I wasn't going to ask a question, but then the, the issue of Trump came up. Mm. Trump was elected partly based on a project called the Cambridge Analytic Project. Mm. The doctrine of the Cambridge Analytic Project was that if you want to change politics, you need to change culture. Mm. If you want to change culture, you need to understand the units of culture, mm. and mm. to say the individual cells. How are they constructed? Right. How do they make decisions to construct the culture that constructs the politics? Mm -hmm. The idea was exactly what you're saying, that we are constructed by language language in a variety of forms, mm. uh, linguistic language, but also aesthetic language. And so once you understand that the human self is constructed um, in a sort of bilateral relationship between culture, language and image, mm. and the plasticity of the brain, if you can mediate that structure, you can then manipulate the sense of self, mm. the sense of world, that then produces the culture, that then produces the politics, that then produces all the other things that we have. Mm -hmm. The same idea that you're proposing to solve the problem is already been weaponized mm. by uh, the machine, if you will. Mm, 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 mm. So the problem becomes for the 20th century that the work you're doing and the work that other people you're doing, mm, working with, mm, mm. have instrumentalized, or provided the, the knowledge base that mm. can be then instrumentalized against us. Mm -hmm. And so the problem becomes, once you understand that we're constructed by culture, mm, mm. how then do you take a position on that culture that is not itself a constructed position? Mm. So I'm, I'm wondering if you've thought about this, because it's mm. sort of a, the um, genie's out of the bottle, how do we put it back in? because we've always been constructed by images mm. and language. The, 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 the animals before us and outside us and around us are also speaking that language and working with an image. Mm. And their subjectivities are constructed in this. It's just ours are different. If you compare culture and civilization, you can understand the difference. You know, civilization must have organization and politician. And you know, the trend of civilization um, developed very rapidly. For example, mechanized civilization, you know, that is kind of civilization. But culture, it can't spread. That stay very small community, but it reflects in people's life, foods, wares, houses and it's very rigid and it is very difficult to you know um, harmonize two cultures you know for example um, we are living in japan but in kansai culture it is difficult to you know understand the kanto culture it's a very small community even if the regional level and uh, culture do not need politician, but they need authority, authority. 
center they need. But it stay for a long time and very rigid. You know, and for example, Christianity, it is not culture, it is civilization. It is global, widely, and it spread rapidly. And it is very politics. And Buddhism also. So culture and civilization is different. So I would like to say we must reconsider firstly culture because it is the base of our life. And then we must consider ethics of global civilization. Now, if we leave civilization, you know, mechanized civilization and digital globalization such as, such as civil, a kind of civilization, um, rapidly widespread. So we must refuse digital world. So now um, we must leave, we, we, we have the tendency to leave our own culture to um, adapt, adopt civilization. So that is our facing problems. What we follow is firstly, we, every, every, every morning we look, look at uh, internet. This is a kind of civilization. Internet civilization is all over the world. And uh, um, when we uh, prepare the food, okay, we go back to our culture. But internet, there is uh, many ethnic foods. And then we can select um, by pushing button. It's very easy. So our culture is, you know, uh, in going into chaos. How we can uh, find the, you know, uh, high sense in culture, it is very difficult. So what is culture we must reconsider? It's what I say. So, then if I could... Uh, Civilization is inevitable, but culture is most important for our life. So if I could then reframe my, my question in your language. It seems to me today what we have is civilization is controlling the mechanisms of culture. Mm -hmm, that's right. So, so the, the food industry, you say we go back to our food. Mm. But 95% the, the of the food industry in the world is controlled by a, a small handful of homogeneous uh, companies mm. that determine what our food chain is going to look like. But also, civilization and culture both influence on our minds. On our minds. So when we, uh, f we feel, yes, security, it is surrounded by our own culture. And also, we are um, feeling security by mechanized, very well-developed environments. So that is both ways we, we can feel. You know. How do you know the security is not a constructed sense of security as long as I stay within the boundaries of what the civilization has told me my culture can be? Mm, mm, and so mm. my sense of what myself is is secure as long as I do not cross the boundaries, mm. the cultural boundaries that civilization has now determined for me. Mm. In which case, civilization can then manipulate my culture such that it has manipulated me in my sense of security. Mm. So but the border of civilization is very faint. Uh -huh. It is not visible. But culture's border is very clear. Uh. Mm. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I just Thank you. And uh, uh, I, I said the last question, but. Um, I found uh, uh, one more question uh, from the on-site uh, audience, and I, I'm very sorry for the speakers of the last que uh, last sec section, but let me <laughs> go. On. So Odagiri Sensei, dozo, please speak. Hi. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Takashi Hodagini. I'm teaching in Kanazawa, and uh, I have more. Maybe uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I have more primatological. Maybe uh, I was very fascinated by your talk on primatology. One thing I am always wondering if uh, when Japanese primatology extended the methodology of participation in the animal community, is it a kind of humanism? Is it possible? Are there any people who criticize their methodology as a kind of humanism in a sense that you, we, are, we are based upon a human hermeneutics to understand animal world? Yes. Um, my supervisor, Junichiro Itani, Itani Junichiro, um, uh, hypothesized the evolutionary path of ethics. Um, finally, um, between human beings and uh, the great apes, such as gorillas and chimpanzees and orangutans, we have shared the equality. But in, even in human society, it is a conditional equality. And for example, um, you know, we, we can adapt the, um, well, um, inequality um, by um, conditions. But we s usually seek equality. That is our hope. And uh, our hopeful society is based on equality. It is very similar to ape society. In gorilla society, they um, don't recognize dominant subordinate relationships. And uh, if conflict occurs, the third party um, intervene the two uh, conflictors. And, you know, uh, they don't uh, recognize who is dominant, who is subordinate. And they keep equality. So that is uh, the trend of their society. Our society has, you know, uh, you using different way, but to the goal of our society is to reach, uh, to cross to equality. That is very similar. And another question, possibly more simple, but possibly more complicated. As a primatology, well, we have a sense of oath, right? Uh, we, we have been talking about ethics. Yes, yes. How e ethics? Uh, ethics. And, uh, oh, how, okay. ethics. How is there any any sense of oath in primate society? How is it coming out? How how did it come out in uh, 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 evolution of primates? If you have any view about it. Well, um, it's two kinds of resources. One is you know the arboreal life. Arboreal life is you know. Uh, body mass is um, has not meaning, you know. Every day, primates are seeking foods in the tree, but you know their food, like fruits, is on the tip of the branch. So, um, large body size is not essential. It's not dominant to you know small body size because um. Monkeys with small body size can quickly reach the tip of the branch to get uh, fruits rapidly. They are not powerful, but they are very, um, you know, uh, advantageous. And then um, group life. Um, you know, uh, major the majority of mammals are always living groups. But primates always living males and females. So it is originally different body size and physiological conditions. But they um, try to equally um, interact. 
with their different conditions in one group. So group life and arboreal life is a resource of, to create equality in primate um, order, I think. Okay. Uh, sorry, my, my question has taken too long, so I should end it. So thank you for, for, for the reply. Yeah, thank you for your question. So uh, now, <laughs> finally, uh, I have to close this uh, special session of keynote speech of uh, Yamagiwa Sensei. So uh, I suppose that you uh, enjoyed very much a rich discussion with Yamagiwa Sensei. Please applaud him. Thank you very much. Thank you.